question. Who would like to meet my sister and join us for a cup of tea? Back in a minute. Okay, go to bring on my um, sister. Bye. Hang on one second. <laughs> hey, <Bye>. hi, everybody. <laughs> Fly, thanks so much for coming by. By the way, happy Mother's Day weekend to everyone and to you too, Violet. And to you. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you are new here, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're a veteran here, Thank you. Thank you, too. And if you just stop and by, thank you for the quick hi. Anyway, Vi, I want to play a little film clip to give the folks a little intro. So I'd like to thank my sister Vi for stopping by today. We're going to share a little sister time this way with you and ourselves. And uh, it's so befitting, especially on this Mother's Day weekend, wishing everyone in advance a happy Mother's Day. Uh, we're going to share some baking tips and since I was five years old, I remember my sister in the kitchen baking and she's six years older than me. So it was just so fun. And that was an incredible influence on me. You know, people don't realize how much people influence each other, even from very, very, very young ages. It's incredible. So without further ado, Vi, we're going to talk about some of your tips right now. Hi, Janet. You almost made me cry with that intro and brought me back. No, I'm sorry. Beginning. No, never, <laughs> never was the intention. Look what I put in your background here. <laughs> oh, my favorite color, purple, because my what, name you is just Violet. Have be, right. <laughs> you happen to be wearing at the moment. Yes. I love the color. Did I ever tell you that that's one of my favorite colors, too? I love purple, lilac. Oh, 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 oh. I thought so. Yeah, I do. I do. I want to mention, and speaking of influence, many times I did videos by using this book that you actually had given to me. Oh, yeah. So thank you very much. I really love it. I utilized it and I love to share the recipes and I recommend it. No, this is not a sponsored ad. Another thing, talk about influence. Remember this for my birthday? Yes, I do. Your pop okay. print in. I turned it around. And it's my secret tin. I love it. Yeah. Influence, influence, influence. It is absolutely yeah. an amazing thing. Fine. Let's get right to it. You have a, well, actually a number of tips that even I could use. And you're mentioning something about something bronze or copper or something. What is that tip? Yeah. Well, first let me tell you, I started, I always loved baking, but then when I was in graduate school, I had to find a way to earn money. And so I started, uh, baking it till I baked it and really got into baking. So I have a number of tips and one of them is um, they don't always necessarily save money because if I put time and effort into something, for example, I'm always going to use pure vanilla, even though it costs a fortune. Sure. Um, pure vanilla. But um, one of the things I started using in recent years was parchment paper and I use it so there's no cross contamination. Smart. And so that I can make very thin lacy cookies without having to scrape them off the pan. So I've been using parchment paper. And then about a year ago, um, I was given one of these, which uh -huh. is a very thin copper baking sheet. And I haven't had to use parchment paper since because it's reusable. It wipes easily. I've used it for all my baking. And I've even used it for things like chicken, which can sometimes stick. So oh, wow. I highly recommend this as one of my newer baking tips. That sounds it's amazing. Anywhere. They're even sold in pharmacies. Um, uh, well, I mean, if, if you were going to say about price, for example, would you say that that's something that is moderately priced or, I mean, affordable or it makes a great gift? Very affordable because I was spending a lot that? more on parchment paper. Yeah. If I added up the number of rolls right. of parchment I would have bought, right. Right. this is a fraction of it and very inexpensive. It pays for itself, basically. Very well, that's, affordable. That's great. Affordable. That's, I'm all for that because even if something, if this is for anyone watching, even if something has an initial bigger cost, 
think of the future cost that, you know, considering how often if a person uses parchment paper, you bake an awful lot of good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. I have people coming to me like, can't you please make those cookies? <laughs> those uh -huh. cookies are winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be bringing some next time I see you. So. Okay, good. Yes. And, and that will be hopefully not so distant future. You know, yeah, you know, I utilize a complete pancake mix a lot, Vi. I, I guess I you might have heard might might have heard mention it at once. Yeah. <laughs> I've used some of your recipes, including the coffee oh, cake, which we love. Thank you so very, very much. That's yeah. like one of the top viewed videos ever. And and you know, on my channel, I so appreciate that because I'm all for um if you have something that's there, nine out of 10 of us have pancake mix in the house and getting the complete is so inexpensive because you're just adding water. You don't yeah. even need an egg, which is like really, really great. Yeah. So we can make so many things, but let's go on to some other tips that you have. I know you have a bunch. Um, I have wonderful rolling pins and whenever I'm doing cut out cookies, I would always put flour and everything over my rolling pins. I even have one of the silicone ones, which is supposedly nonstick. But something that I've done recently is taking my cookie dough and putting a sheet of plastic wrap over it before I roll it out. Mm -hmm. And it's reusable for the whole duration of that cookie batch. So I can roll my dough really thin, then just simply lift off the plastic wrap and nothing sticks to the rolling pin. Wow. I'm able to make the most of the dough. And um, it, it's I just love this. really well. I love this because especially, you know, when you're cleaning up and even though we love to, you know, have baking sessions or whatever, the cleaning up part is never the most fun part. So you're reducing some of the mess. Some of the mess and also it allows me to make some extremely thin cookies. I know some folks make wow. cookies that are wafer-like and with the use of the plastic wrap, I can roll them as thin as I want. Would you happen to know offhand, for example, out of one of your thinly done cookies about how long do you bake that for? Because that can be a little tricky business. Okay. Well, baking, it depends. The one tip I can give you about timing yes. is take it out of the oven about a minute or two before it starts to really look browned because the reality is cookies continue to bake on the right. cooking sheet when Good it comes point. out of the oven. It doesn't just suddenly stop and start. Right. So I always take it out about, I would say about a minute before oh. and um, it just continues cooking and you get the perfect consistency. So you're saying even, let's say if the, let's say following instructions of a mix, uh -huh. even then you suggest to uh, take it out one minute before that? I do. I think you have to know your oven. Yeah. Good point. And so it could vary. I have a gas oven. Right. Um, some folks are at a higher altitude. They have to adjust it. Some folks have sure. electric ovens. So know your oven, but you don't have to wait till it's completely browned. It will continue to brown. You right. don't want it raw. Yeah, I mean, you don't want it raw, but it will continue a minute or two after you take it out. So play around and, with it. Okay. And it is interesting. You reminded me of something because anytime I ever bake any cookies, when you first take it out, it looks like, like it would be very soft to the touch. Uh-huh like almost gooey like you know like oh yeah. we have to let it cool off anyway but i see what you're saying with that wow yeah and i know you have a few more that you would like to mention i do along those same lines don't overbeat your mixes um when you overbeat it tends to make a rougher texture so if you want no. a light fluffy texture to your cakes good point don't overbeat. And if it's muffins, I really would suggest hand mixing to just be True. gentle with it. True. And the texture would be different. Now, if you're doing a pound cake, you want the density. So you can cream that butter and sugar and really, really beat it in. But if you overbeat flour, it makes it tough. Right. So again, it's playing around with it, with your recipes, with where you live, with your utensils. And not being afraid to experiment. I remember yeah. when I was 
right? I remember yeah. when, when we were kids, I was fascinated by that, like that, well, you know, bronze looking, copper looking, whatever you call that. Yeah. That, you know, that dispenser that you push out, but what, what do you yeah, call it? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? But you know the one. <laughs> yeah. Where you just like put in the thing and, you know, make the shapes, whatever. Help us out here, folks. Oh, yeah, like the cookie that. press. Oh, you mean a cookie press? <laughs> a cookie press. Okay. So, so fun. So, so fun. And I but have walk along the press lines while yeah. we're squeezing tips in. Yes. Um, if you don't have a pastry bag and you don't have fancy tips, and especially for cupcakes, you could take your icing, put it in a little sandwich bag, cut the tip of the sandwich bag, and then pipe it along your cupcakes. Comes out. Wow. Right. And it, it does wow. the same trick. And that's really great. And of course, you know, you know, we miss our mom Mother's Day weekend reminiscing and everything. But what did mom love to top on everything? Real whipped cream, right? Whipped cream. Okay. Yeah. So through that experience, and I used to make a lot of whipped cream for my mom. Let me tell you something. I learned a trick that is so very true and it makes a difference. Always chill the bowl. Yes. Put bowl away before you start using your mixer and getting those yeah. wonderful stiff peaks. And I like to use a little bit of confectionery sugar. It yes. helps stabilize it a little bit and thicken it up some more. Yes. <laughs> it's delicious. Yes. I wish I had some right now. <laughs> and it's great. Yes. yes. It's great on everything. Yes. Vi, you know, you used to make those, I never forget for my birthday when I was younger, those amazing chocolate chip pizzas. And the detail that you put into that, do you recommend them as, I mean, it worked great for me as a gift. Did you ever give them to other people as well? And if so, did they like them? Those ch chocolate chip pizzas or giant chocolate chip cookies. Yes. Are very inexpensive to make. And out of one batch of cookie dough, I can usually get two or three giant cookies. Oh, that's amazing. And sometimes I would just um, pipe along the edges or... Throw different things for each. They were so cute because I the little jelly beans. Me, yeah, you got me a little pizza. She got me a little pizza box. It came in a pizza box. I'm like, pizza for my birthday? Oh well, that's nice, but it's probably cold. But no, it was a chocolate chip pizza. <laughs> and saves a lot of time. Um, another thing is, I, as you know, Janet, am an ice cream lover. Yeah. And no. As a result of that, I have many ice cream scoops, different kinds of scoops. And I use a scoop for portion control. Yeah. That's because true. sometimes I will just, you know, it's about a half cup scoop. Right. But I also use them when I'm making muffins and cupcakes because I scoop out the batter right. and put it right into the cup without everything dripping all over the pan. I have a dedicated scoop for the same purpose, but I do that with meatballs. Now, if mom ever knew that, she'd go, ah, oh, don't use my ice cream scoop. I have a dedicated scoop for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and something else I started doing, um, I love peanut butter. And I love <laughs> peanut butter cookies. Yes. <laughs> um, but I don't always like measuring out the peanut butter. It's usually a mess. So yeah. I found that if I spray my measuring cup, right, a little bit of um, non -stick. You know, whatever you have, yeah, nonstick. Great. And, um, and then put the peanut butter in. It just releases right into the awesome. But you also oh. mentioned that nonstick spray is not necessarily great everywhere. Yeah, I actually. I actually called into a cooking show one time to ask about this because um, if you have non-stick cookware, sometimes people will still spray it. But what I found was putting non-stick spray onto a non-stick pan actually makes it stick. So it's kind of like, wow, I don't know, double negative or something. Um, but you know, I have had that happen to me and I'm like, but I sprayed enough on it. I'm like, why is this happening? But I do use a little bit of a solid in that case to lightly, yeah, very Mommy, lightly grease it, whatever you have, margarine, short, anything. Butter. Mommy was right years ago with the Imperial, which I had mentioned on a previous show. I have great success, especially if I'm making, you know, um, you know, like a banana loaf or an apple, whatever. I love working with Imperial. Uh, that to me is the 
Cadillac. No, this is not a sponsored ad. <laughs> well, Fire, do you have anything else? Because we're going to have to wrap this up for time constraints. I would say um, just remember that if you don't have buttermilk, but you want to make some great buttermilk biscuits, to put a tablespoon of vinegar and then uh, enough milk to make one cup, let it sit a couple of minutes, and you got buttermilk for your baking. So Yay! <laughs> I love it. It's cheaper than buttermilk. <laughs> which you don't drink anyway. So. <laughs> well, Vi, after I end the broadcast, just stay put. And you and I continue some sister time on this okay, Mother's Day weekend. Both of us would like to wish everyone watching a wonderful Mother's Day, no matter what you do. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll be back again. Thanks for coming, Vi. When? Real soon. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.